I hate top five lists. So I made a top five list and now I hate myself. So I guess we should start with the list. Otherwise I'm just going to get cut off by the opening credits to show and tell with Eric. The Criterion channel is probably my favorite streamer because it feels like the people behind it actually care about movies. There's no algorithm, it's curation. They break things up into different themes. For example, an upcoming theme in September is New Hollywood 1966 to 1979. Most of the movies I'm going to talk about are from this era. Here are my top five upcoming films for the Criterion channel in September 2024. Number five on the list is House on Haunted Hill from 1955, starring Vincent Price and directed by William Castle. Price invites five people over to a haunted mansion to stay the night, and if they can stay the whole night, they get $10,000. That's $108,000 in 2024 money. Now, I'd do it for $10,000 today. It's $10,000 for a sleepover. It's also got... Elisha Cook Jr., who you will recognize from everything. Sitting at number four is The Graduate from 1967, starring Dustin Hoffman and Anne Bancroft. I feel like this is a, an easy one. Even if you haven't seen it, you know the premise. College grad has an affair with his parents' friend, Mrs. Robinson. Things get complicated when he meets Mrs. Robinson's daughter. Look, that's what happens in the movie. But that's not what the movie's about. Give it a watch. It also has one of my favorite scene transitions in any movie ever made, ever. Number three is Clute, Alan J. Pakula's 1971 thriller starring Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland. I'm not going to tell you anything about the movie, except Donald Sutherland is great. Put him on Canadian currency, why don't you? But it is Jane Fonda's movie all the way. Don't forget Pakula's other Paranoia Trilogy movies, The Parallax View and All the President's Men. The Criterion Channel has a secret weapon, and that secret weapon is supplemental features. Because Clute is a Criterion collection, collection release, it's going to have some of the supplemental features that are featured supplementary on their very expensive discs. This is reason enough alone to get a membership. Uh, no, Criterion Channel is not paying me to say this, but I'm open to it. Number two is a documentary, 1991's Hearts of Darkness, A Filmmaker's Apocalypse, chronicling the trials and tribulations of the making of Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now. I say trials and tribulations. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on. It, oh boy. It's being released to the channel alongside the very, very, very long 2001 re-edit of Apocalypse Now. It's, it's called Apocalypse Now Redo. There's a version that came out in 2019 called Apocalypse Now Final Cut. It's less long. It's like Blade Runner, just pick your flavor. But check out the documentary. This guy shows up. Let's throw in a few honorable mentions. First, Empire Records. Celebrate Rex Manning Day a little early or a little late with this 1990s hit. Sorry, 1990s flop that critics adore. Sorry, critics hate it. Really? Next is The Last Picture Show from 1971, directed by Peter Bogdanovich. Peter Bogdanovich, not just the guy who knows Orson Welles. It's about the lives of young people in a dying Texas town. It's... A lot. But it's excellent. My last honorable mention on the list is another easy one. It's another standard. It's Taxi Driver by Martin Scorsese from 1976. It, it's an achievement, and I do believe everybody should watch it at least once. It's not one that I revisit every year. My favorite Scorsese is After Hours. But I'm not going to do any of this revisionist, no, you know, actually it's not very good at all kind of nonsense just because the director made fun of your little Marvel movies. Take that, Ant-Man 3. Have I mentioned how much I hate lists? Let's just do this. Days of Heaven, 1978, Terrence Malick. There it is. 
Richard Gere, Brooke Adams, Sam Shepard, and some of the most breathtaking cinematography I've ever seen in my life. Even the kid is great in this. Her narration is... <clears throat> and it's 94 minutes long. Great movies don't have to be 202 minutes long, Francis. Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree with my list? Why don't you make your own damn list and put it in my comments? What else are you looking forward to seeing? I'd love to hear from you. This was really hard. I had to choose from a whole bunch of truly great films that... Oh, my Cousin Vinny's coming? I forgot about My Cousin Vinny. And 12, and 12 Angry Men. All right, I gotta restart this list. Okay, number... F Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you're in a position to help the channel grow, you can do so by providing support at coffee.com slash ericfell, or you can just, you know, keep watching. And we got a Discord stuff, but thanks for watching. Bye!